Yep, we are recording. We are rocking and rolling. What's up, y'all? What's up, podcast episode one nineteen? Yo, yo, yo. I'm mm-hmm. your host Lawrence Deloach. Uh, to my bottom, uh, we got uh, my main man Luke Trovisi. What's up, guys? Uh, Chris couldn't be here today. Uh, he's off doing some white shit in Massachusetts. Uh, don't look into it. It's scary. <laughs> um, uh, so I brought in my friend uh, from the Asian Takeover episode. Shotty up next. Rapper extraordinary. It was, was good. Third yeah. string. Third string choice. For <laughs> string <it>. choice. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Rob Hayes couldn't do it. Uh, Isaiah couldn't do it. So we got <laughs> Shotty up next instead. Oh, yeah, it was man. good. It was good. It was good. We couldn't get ASAP oh. Rocky either. So we got. Yeah. Or Travis, or Travis Scott, or Travis. he was busy. He was Nobody. Busy. So we got fucking <laughs> our SoundCloud rapper friend. <laughs> what up? What up? What up? Good to have you, bro. Um, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, man. Let's. Just, I mean, let's just kind of like get into. It's been an interesting week, man. In yeah. In terms of the fashion sneaker world, um, obviously, uh, what was it Thursday? Uh, the uh, Dior. They they had a registration up that was. Uh, it was. It, it was uh, it came up at 7 a.m. Eastern time. Mm-hmm. I hit that fast. You hit yeah. it fast, yeah. <laughs> had to. He had to. Um, and it was, you know, they said it was supposed to be up for a few days, but obviously it got clipped in a couple hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, and this goes to show you that because obviously there's, if we do the numbers on this sneaker, it's a $2,200 sneaker for the highs and, and 2000 for the lows. Mm-hmm. We got around 8,000 pairs of the highs. Mm-hmm. We got around what four, five thousand. Let's just say five thousand pairs of the lows. People are getting seated these pairs. You know, friends oh, and yeah. family. Mm-hmm. You got people. You got uh, very important clients. You got Vicks getting their pairs, mm-hmm. and um, and then that leaves a battle royale for around seven point nine million people for around eighty pairs. That's what it feels like. Bullshit. No, no. I mean, you're, you're right because uh, during the Asian Takeover episode, at that point, if if you remember, Luke. I had a plug. Yes. I had a super plug. At that yeah. point, Paris wasn't, was like, take all the clients down, take all the credit cards and everything. And I had about probably a hundred people lined up ready to get their pairs. And I was about to take money per mm-hmm. pair. So I was going to get a pair plus cake and I was going to keep my pair because I had already eat, eaten off it, you know? Yeah. Two months in or like a month in after that, worries about COVID and then Paris started reaching out to all the stores and told them, um, you have, you have to get vetted by someone in the store. You have to spend at least a hundred thousand, I think for you to get a pair, at least a hundred thousand a year Oof. or 150,000. I know for sure. And the only way for you to get it is if a manager approves the client, and then the manager has to submit that client to Paris for approval. So not only that, not only do you have to spend a lot of money, you also have to not be a dick to the managers. Exactly. And you know those guys are assholes. And Paris has to approve you. Yeah. So if the manager rides for you and Paris says yes, so you got to go through two hoops just for these fucking shoes. You got to go through $150,000 hoops just <laughs> yeah. to get to the other two hoops. So I was like, yo, I give up. So that, that brings up a very, that brings up something that I, I want to, you know, talk to you guys about in terms of sneakers. Cause everyone wants, you know, a lot of people want these sneakers for whatever reason, whether mm-hmm. it's a flip to, to, for the toe, for whatever. And, um, and when you get to these, these high end sneakers, uh, you, it's very important to build a relationship, but it's like you said, it's deeper than just a relationship with a sales rep because yeah. you, you could have that relationship, but unfortunately when you don't spend enough money, yeah, then things go, you know, you're not getting anything. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, do you guys, I mean, honestly, like this is going to be obviously the highest <laughs> price point for a Jordan one, you know, retail. Is it is it hype or is it like is this like this high price point justified on these sneakers? I think it's hype. I yeah. personally think it's hype. I, I don't think they've done anything like like think about the things that Jordan has done in the past as far as like I think the the the, the first thing I can think of is like the Jordan Levi's pack mm-hmm. and, and and the kind of attention to detail with the denim it came with. You know, like remember when that came out? Mm-hmm. Dude, yeah. You're just getting shoes. For $2,200 retail, you're just getting shoes. And we don't know what kind of leather they're putting on it. It just says Dior on it. And, like, it, 
to me is nothing crazy. If it if it didn't say Dior on it, that's a hundred fifty dollar sneaker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just the just the colorway and everything except for the swoosh. That already exists. This is the the racer blues. The exactly. those zoom fears. Did you remember those? Hold on. There's there's no there's nothing further. It doesn't it doesn't like. There's nothing it offers more. Mm-hmm. It's is to me is is purely hype. Like that, that, that's all it is. Exactly. This is like the same exact shoe. This is like remember we were saying earlier. These are like the poor man's Dior's. Yeah, extremely. Yeah, extremely poor Dior's. <laughs> exactly. Like, but it's like the same colorway practically. It's the only difference is like the swoosh is, you know, uh, much less detailed, and obviously the leather is not as high quality but that being said you know it's it's the same idea it's the same concept it's the same like kind of milky gray concept yeah i I just don't feel it offers anything more like this is rent money like let's be honest Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is rent money people are spending that that people like people want to keep this Mm -hmm. not every not every i mean you know let's say 80 percent of people do want to resell it to somebody who's obviously going to buy it but the people that do want to keep like it's crazy. You're yeah. spending you're spending somebody's New York rent money on this shit. I don't yeah. think it's worth it. Well, that's what that's what I was gonna say. And I think a lot of, like even with Dior, the the raffle, like when you really went to the terms of their raffle, the way they, they put it, it was like, Oh, whoever clicked the link first or whoever signed up first has the priority to get it. So basically they're saying like if you sign up at seven, like you, you got a small chance, but I mean people who are signing up at noon and, and mm-hmm. two like, I mean, because I think it got clipped around like one o'clock in the afternoon or something like that. So you're telling me, yeah. like, it, it just it just feels as if obviously these shoes aren't for the average consumer. Therefore, I mean, I saw uh, Tory Lanez today. He sent out a tweet how he had hit up Kim Jones for a pair and Kim looked out for him. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's who these are designed for. These aren't seeing the if you if you somehow luck into a pair, then god bless you but i mean i just don't see many people with this this gives me complete uh louis supreme vibes where the yeah. good shit went to the 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 high-end clients the people who yep. spend the money right which makes sense you know i i feel like they put it at that price point because they don't want just the regular sneakerhead who's reselling who's just trying to get that shoe you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. they, they don't want it for for just the the kid shopper they want it for the dior shopper Mm -hmm. and they they want it for somebody who who's going to put in their closet and like really i guess beat up the shoe you know really wear it that's the kind that that's why they seed it to all these like artists i guess you know like you never really know what's going on through their heads i think kim jones himself is a great designer and Mm -hmm. i like the direction he did take dior but i just think these are so hype yeah, I think I think they're hype, but uh, I I kind of look back and I and I laugh because I, I I have a like I always say I have a pair of uh, Louis Vuitton Jaspers and I, I I remember what I had to do to get those and it was I mean it was literally the the, the simplest shit ever I remember it was the sneaker came out in uh, like summer of two thousand nine yeah. and I remember um, I remember call I remember around. 2010 like it was winter of early 2010 so it's like february or whatever and i remember calling louis vuitton on some like a shot in the dark and i was like hey do you still have any any kanye uh louis vuitton's in size i think it was i said uh, louis vuitton 11 and the rep she said uh she was from jersey and she said we have a pair of jaspers would you like them and for me to call you know seven eight months after the shoe released and for me to still be able to score the pair and like you said, not have to go through hoops. And, right. and obviously this is a decade ago and people have, you know, the sneaker market is increased and, and you know, the, the things that people would do for this. But like, I, it, just, it just goes to show you like how much things have changed and how, um, how important it is to kind of like be cool with a sales rep. Yeah, like, exactly. I, I, had a, I had a funny story uh, about Barney's, man. I remember... Um, and 25th, like I had this, this sales rep, he used to look out and on things that he could, like, you know, it wasn't anything super crazy, but like, you know, uh, I remember some like fragment stuff would come out and he would hit me up. And um, I remember the Don C's came out mm-hmm. and the, the powder blue, jo- not the powder, but the, the Royal blue joints came out mm-hmm. and what, uh, 
February. And I remember he called, he texted me in January. He's like, Hey, would you like a pair of the Don C's? And I was like, hell yeah. And you know, and I, uh, and I, I, like, I tried to like jump on it because I knew how hype they would be. And I gave him my information and shit. And he hit me back like a couple weeks later. And he was like, yo, I, I can't, it's clip like, cause very important people who spend so much money at Barney's yeah. were getting the priority. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. That's just, you know, like, no matter how hard you try sometimes as, as someone who has worked in high end retail, there's always going to be your higher up telling you, we can't do that. Like someone's going to always try to stop you. And that's the problem. Like you could, that's why it's hard. Like when people are like, Oh, my boy works there, but I can't even get anything. You got to believe that. Cause it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. like, yeah. even like when I had a, a Louis Vuitton plug, right. Mm -hmm. just, just to, just to ask them for the discount is tough because they get a certain allotment that they can spend. Right. It's only like three or 5,000 every six months. Mm -hmm. And what is that? You know, 30% off like a bag you get for somebody or a wallet. That's already, mm -hmm. you're already spending. Mm -hmm. That shit is gone in like two months. Yep. Exactly. Uh, which ones did you put in for? I put in for the lows. I went high. I went yeah. high only because it's a numbers game, I felt like. But mm -hmm. yeah. Either way, you, I mean, it's still. Oh, no, I'm catching that L regardless. Yeah, catching. I, I personally, though, love the lows, like visually yeah. versus the high. Oh, yeah. Like, as yeah. far as like a, a shoe to wear, the low shits yeah. on. But the high, if I do get them, I'm telling them. Of course. Just, yeah, I'm I mean, getting 10 pairs of Sakai's or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. When you look at it, I mean, you, like you said, I mean, the early numbers of what people were talking about reselling, we're talking 10K. So that's the yeah. early, you know, projection or, or um, obviously it could be higher, it could be lower. But if we're talking a, a, a five-figure shoe, you, you, you have to really, like I said, there's only really a certain type of person. It's almost like the, like the Supreme... Uh, Louis Vuitton bogos like you, not many people you know were, were wearing those and, and this is an even um, an even higher value to me as shoes so yeah yeah uh, do you guys I mean I don't know are you are you a fan of are you obviously are you going to try to flip the clothing if you get your hands on the clothes or see that's the thing I don't even know what people are feeling about the clothes if it's even worth putting any work in you know yeah, like I don't hear anything about the clothes. People are just like, "Oh, they're cool." The cargo pants. I personally like the cargo pants. I thought they were kind of fire. Mm -hmm. I saw a pair. I don't know if they were real, but I saw them months ago, and I, and they were like navy blue. I thought those were kind of fire if they were a, a real design and not a mock up. Let's see. Hold on. I have the, I have them up here right now. Let me see. I have the whole line here. The jacket looks nice with like the Air Dior logo on the back. It's it's nice, but it's like, I yeah exactly. I I don't know what these are gonna go for. You you, yeah. you might be holding a fucking you might be holding a, an L like a huge L. The no. shorts the shorts are they look like just like dicky shorts. Mm hmm. What's your thoughts on having having apparel but not the shoes? Like in terms of if you're a person who wants to say you want to wear the apparel but you don't get to have the shoes, is that I don't think like I I think that you could dress up the Dior jacket, and you could wear as long as you wear Jordans like you know like don't wear them yeah or, or you can wear them with a Dior shoe as long as it's on brand you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. I don't think yeah. it's too far off but if you're wearing the Dior jacket with some like wide threes you look kind of crazy you know mm -hmm. or if you, or or if you're just not as long as you stay on brand I don't think that I don't think there's too much of a problem because. People are not gonna look at you and be like, "Wow, he he has the jacket, but not the shoes." Yeah, we also gotta be realistic. Like, you know, I'm not judging anybody that's got the, they, you know, they got it. They bought the, the clothes. Like, yeah, yeah. Say they spent the bread, you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So wear your New York City Ben and Jerry shirt, <laughs> Lawrence. <laughs> without the without the Ben and Jerry. Without the yeah. Ben and Jerry. Uh, yeah, L entered the New York City uh raffle and he had to buy a shirt and now he's just got a shirt <laughs> she's got an ice cream shirt that doesn't know what he's wearing when he's gonna wear them yeah that's the you know so it's that's it's interesting to me man I, what is it uh when do people find out sometime this week right it should be july uh, 1st they said july 1st so that's, that's when the when the raffles go what, out wednesday wednesday yes that's crazy so yeah we're already in july too it's nuts yeah 
Mm -hmm. we've been in quarantine for this long uh shoddy what have you been buying as far as like quarantine purchases did you buy anything crazy i bought uh two pairs of capital socks with the smiley faces on the heel okay just like kind of like essentials uh mm -hmm. i bought i bought this candle i'm big on malin and gets i'm big on candles really yeah okay. so i bought a malin and gets candle i bought some rick owens pants i bought um union LA and I think Beffy is how you pronounce it. Supply. They had a Black Lives Matter shirt mm -hmm. uh, with, with all the phrases on the back. So I bought one to support it. I thought it was fire. It's green. It's got the flag on the front, and then on the back, it's got a bunch of stuff like like Black Lives Matter, saying no to racism, um, by any means necessary. I had to get that. Yeah. Um, I bought a shirt from a brand called Most High. Uh, most H E Y E. It's one of my boys brands. I'm just, you know, trying to support small businesses because mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. people are doing that. I uh, feel what you. else did I get? Not much. That's yeah. Oh, I bought an Elix vest too. Oh um, yeah. That was kind of an impulse buy. I was just like, nice. yo, I need another vest. So I found it online and I was oh, like, Oh, the $1,400 vest wasn't enough. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> so I had to get another one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. I, what, have I guys been buying? what have you guys been buying? I buy stupid shit, man. Last week I bought shields for my sneakers. Finally, like for, you know those like the the toe Dark box. Yeah. yeah, that's I those are like. Them, but I never bought them. They're solid. They're very like I I don't know if I bought the wrong ones, but they're like they're a little uncomfortable. You know, yeah. they're you're like you you're wearing them and you're like my sneakers are gonna be good, but my toes are gonna feel like shit. You know. <laughs> Like, I don't know if these are, like, really worth it. Like, I'd, I'd rather just, like, beat the shit out of my shoes so that people know, like, I actually wear the shoes that I buy. No, I get that. You know? It's, like, kind of like a badge for me. I, I prefer to have, like a, like, a little bit of beat on my shoes. Uh, but that being said, my fear of God raids are cooked. cooked. They're cooked now. I can't do anything oh, with them. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had yeah. them for a year, and I've, I've worn them, like, almost every damn day, and now they're cooked. It's yeah. a damn shame because I like them a lot. You should buy another pair. You should buy I'm another. I'm gonna pair. probably buy another pair, honestly. Yeah. I wish I had held. I had four pairs of those of the raids. I remember I wish that. I held them because I would have made more money now. Yeah, because now the people who fuck with them are—they're just utility shoes, honestly. Yeah. They're really good utility shoes. The black pair I saw a pair in ten and a half for three hundred. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. I sold them for retail. Yeah, they're not going for crazy amounts though. Nah. Yeah, I'll probably that'll be probably my next quarantine purchase. Did you buy anything crazy this week, Lawrence? Uh, I I mean I've been taking advantage of uh, I've been taking advantage of sales season on like Mr. Porter and shit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I I copped a rude T-shirt. Oh, you got uh, another rude item? Uh, yeah, but I, yeah, I don't know if I want to keep the shorts, but I, I like uh this t-shirt i got was fire and um that's really it i got a john elliott t-shirt it's just some summer shit you know yeah. what I mean? Lawrence hey, what shorts did you get oh go ahead the the burgundy uh logo joints mm. that's fire yeah that's yeah he was showed me a picture of him and i was like yo these are these actually look pretty good man i don't yeah. know if you want to return them Nah, I mean that's the thing. I mean sometimes you you'll get something and you'll be like fuck, and but then at the same time you're like yo, I should actually kind of I kind of keep these. I kind of like them. So mm -hmm. I've been uh, looking at shorts too. How's that? Are you still holding on to that uh, the card holder? Yeah, the card holder definitely. That's a that's something that, that's like something you need. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And mm -hmm. I, I actually really like that. So yeah, that's a, that was a nice piece. I like that a lot. He bought like a what was it Tom Brown? Yeah, Tom Brown. Yeah, Tom Brown card holder. Fire, fire. Yeah. Fire. Sometimes you catch some shit on like sometimes you gotta catch some shit on a good sale, and it's like, all right, cool. Like, would I, I would I pay full price for this? Absolutely not. But I'll pay, you know, when it's 70 percent off. I'm saying yeah. I'm, about to, I'm about to look because I've been looking for shorts. I've been looking for like short Prada shorts. I was looking at the new Noah stuff. They had some color block. I don't know. I just feel like. Uh, yeah, I buy a lot of expensive clothes or I catch a lot of expensive clothes on sales, but shorts is something I'm still iffy about. Like, yeah, me too. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'll buy a good pair of pants. I always buy, I'll buy an expensive t-shirt because, you know, you're wearing it, but shorts is just something about it that it, is it's it because you, you only really wear them like 
four months out of the year here in New York. Right. And like, if, if you can wear it in the fall with a hoodie, then, you know, you're putting some work in them, but barely, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I could wear pants, I'm going to just wear pants. That's how I feel too. And I feel like, I feel like how many times can you wear, like if you get like some basic shorts, some basic, like no logo, but like there's certain shorts that's like, how many times can you wear them? Mm-hmm. You know, in the summer without, you know, it's like cost per wear, bro. Like, you know. That's why I know how you feel about the root shorts. Like how many times can you wear this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I get that. Mm-hmm. And that's, that. that's the thing I think like kind of just makes me say, all right, Lawrence, like do you or do you not? But like you said, it's, you know, a pair of jeans. Yeah, I'll spend. You know, I'll spend. You know, decent money on jeans because, like you said, it. You know, that's something you can get some wear out of. Yeah. But a hoodie, of course. But shorts, that's a ugh. tough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got to really commit, and it's got to be something that you know is going to work with your wardrobe, and you're going to wear it again, and you're bold enough to take another photo in it if you take a, a fit pic already. <laughs> that's that's another. You, I agree with you on that. It's almost like the whole, like you said, like you. Some some items you only want to be photoed in one time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, and 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 the next thing you know, it's like, all right, is this the only pair of shorts this guy has? Or is this that's like, true. Something? Yeah, that's true. Especially those those rude shorts, they're very identifiable. If you were yeah. to go up on stage with those and somebody took a picture and then three weeks later you wore the same shorts, people would be like, you only got two pairs of shorts. That's what I'm saying. It's it's one of those <laughs> things, man. So you got to kind of really. I never you know, thought about that. That's such a good point uh-huh. as far as like as an artist and branding and shit. Uh-huh. Hey, man. People Oof. want to see you new shit all the time. Yeah. You never know. That's how they identify you. Yeah. Shadi, you have like a, a decent amount of like uh, Instagram photos of your fits and whatnot. And you're constantly I mean, recycling. I took, well, I took down a lot of photos. Because you, because you took up for too many fits, right? I, I feel like it was getting oversaturated and I wanted mm-hmm. to restart and yeah. I got a lot of fits. I want to redo, you know, like yeah. I feel like in hindsight, I was looking at some of the stuff in my archive. I was like, mm, I think I can do this outfit better now that my closet is updated. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So I that's where up, I'm at. I feel you, man. I keep updating my closet and I'm just like, hey, this, who, who was, who was this person four years ago? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, you go through, you go through your, um, like, I look at, like, even the stuff I was, like, I have from, like, 2016, and I'm like, dude, like, a lot of this shit, you know, like, the three-by-one jeans, I I love three-by-one back in the days, oh, my God, like, I was, like, I fucking love three-by-one, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's just certain things that, that you just wear, and then all of a sudden, it's like, all right, this just doesn't, this doesn't translate five years later. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. Do you think uh, do you want to talk about the Yeezy Gap stuff now? Yeah, we could definitely. Uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about that because that's uh, that's pretty right. big. Speaking of 2015, who, who, guys who was fucking huge. I mean, still huge, but in 2015, Yeezys were different. Yeah, it Yeezys, was different. I, Turtle Doves, uh, Pirate Blacks. I mean, dudes were spending you know, you know, four figures for on the resale market for a pair of Yeezys. Yeah. Well, as soon as I got the Turtle Doves. I remember I won actually the first pair of Yeezys Adidas were the gray high tops, right? Gray high tops. Yep. Yeah. I, I was going to flip them, but one of my close friends was like, please bro, I'll do anything. If you give them to me, I was like, all right. So I gave them to him only a hundred over retail. I technically gave it to him for retail, but he, oh, gave, oh. he, just, he threw me. Was that a bug Lawrence? What the yeah, fuck was, was that? I was, I was like, I didn't know what it was. It was fucking bug. Yeah, fucking yeah. Looked like you caught the Holy ghost. Just what? I was like, <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, my bad. And then, like, every release after, I don't know. I feel like back then it was easier for me to get <laughs> raffles. Like, I got the Turtle Doves, the Moon yeah. Rocks, the Pirate Blacks. I had everything. I was even selling that sh- them shits on, on, on the line. Like, I remember when the Pirate Blacks came out, I was literally on the line next to get them. Mm-hmm. I had a size 9 because I knew, like, I wasn't wearing these. I was never really into them. And some kid came up to me and he was like, what size do you have? Like, a little kid, like a 12-year-old kid. And I was like, there are nine. Why? He goes, will you sell them to me? I will do anything for them. I was like, yeah, $1,000. Uh, he, uh, like, he was like, seriously? I was, I was like, I was like, seriously? You, you, you <laughs> about to buy them? He goes and gets his dad. Because this was in Soho when the Adidas store was like, I think on Wooster. Uh-huh. And he gets his dad. And his dad goes, listen, all I got for you is 800 I said, 
there you go. <laughs> that's all. That's six hundred dollars uh-huh. I didn't have. That's uh-huh. ridiculous. You my girl went to Puerto Rico the next month. Uh-huh. So, oh, I remember that. <laughs> That's what that's where you got that money? That's where you got the Puerto Rico money, you son of a bitch. Good times. Good times. Fuck. Yeah, that, that I mean that's what I'm saying. That that Yeezy era and, and but it was interesting was a lot of people were very upset about it because people were like, Hey man, what the fuck, man? Like this is the same stuff you're basically pulling at Nike where we can't mm-hmm. touch any shoes. And um and then he, he got to that point where he was like, Yeah, I'm trying to have Yeezys for all. Mm-hmm. And um and you know when he said it, people you know people still didn't believe it. But as time really progressed, it it really got to that point where anyone could get a pair of Yeezys. Yep. And um, I look at his deal with the Gap, and it's obviously it's it's a guy coming full circle, who guy who you know rapped about working at the Gap, and you know, and then for him to have some type of deal with the Gap, and it's it's interesting to me because you look at his his boy Virgil who Mm -hmm. is at Louis Vuitton and you look at like Don C with his high end shit and, and all his guys have these, these deals with these, you know, uh, high end brands. And then Yeezy's like, fuck it. I'm going to do a gap deal. Yeezy's for the people, man. He's for the people. What do you guys guys think about the deal? I, I think it's, I personally think it's fire. I think it's fire. Not for, not not because it's easy. I think it's fire because of what you said. Because he's coming full circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because like for you to work there and then and then be who you are, become a status symbol, and then come all the way back and be like, you know what? Now I'm the boss. I'm yeah. I'm gonna do work with you guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now there's like it's it's almost like a fuck you to all the managers and everybody that you know was giving me shit mm-hmm. working at that mall, working at that gap. So yeah. I like it. I like it for the principle. Yeah. Just what it is. Now, I don't know what he might come up with or what, what the team might come up with. Um, I'm going to be open-minded on it. I'm not paying $500 for a pair of Gap Chinos. I'm going to say yeah. that right now. That's true. Well, I think, I think we've seen with uh, other, like, you know, high, like other designers that have high price points in terms of, like, clothing. I remember the Gap John Elliott. Uh, thing and it was you know everything was pretty reasonable it was within gap standards you know it wasn't you weren't spending you know two hundred dollars for a hoodie it was you know 80 90 bucks for a hoodie mm-hmm. yeah. uh, I think we're going to see something similar with with Yeezy I think I mean obviously I don't think we're going to get you know the Yeezy season one prices that we saw obviously that's that's not happening but we're I think we'll get some reasonable price stuff do you I, think there's going to be resale value because I personally don't think there's going to be much yeah. resale value I don't think there's going to be resale value, but he will change the cuts of items. I think that's what it is. The biggest thing is the the tailoring of certain pieces and mm-hmm. certain parts of the collection where it's going to tailor to more young adult, mm-hmm. more streetwear, just something that more people will buy into instead of like, like the everyday. Cause you know, I, th- I think their goal is to attract a crowd that will consistently buy something. Right, which is what why is they like, have the 10-year deal. Yeah, it's a 10-year mm-hmm. deal, right? So, yeah. So, I mean, they've got, like, Kanye has a literal cult following. Right. Whatever he does, he, he's going to bring that, that with him. Mm-hmm. So, we'll see. Well, it's interesting, too. I mean, uh, as, soon as, um, as soon as the deal was announced, Gap stock increased immediately. Uh, Crazy. It went up, it went oh, up uh, I think, $3 God. immediately uh, per share. So, I mean, he definitely has uh, some type of effect. And um, and I think, you know, these, a lot of, like it's a good deal because a lot of these stores are struggling right now. Mm-hmm. A lot of these businesses, a lot mm-hmm. of these brands are, are legitimately struggling. And I think, you know, to me, the Gap is one of those stores that kind of, you know, is, is, is struggling. We see it in 2020, man. A lot of uh, stores are just filing for bankruptcy, man. Yeah. Uh, you said Neiman Marcus before this was closing, before we started. Uh, well, uh, uh, J. Crew filed for bankruptcy, Neiman Marcus, J.C. Penney, uh, Aldo, a lot of, a lot of stores. And I feel like, um, I feel like a lot of these stores, a, well, here's my thing. And I, I'll say this. I feel like a lot of businesses in this country can't survive without getting a paycheck for a month, which is, that's a whole different topic. But mm-hmm. I think we're seeing some type of shift from all from in store to online as well as people want the boutique experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I think uh, I know I know a store like I mean I know we saw Barney's close this year. Uh, a lot of these stores are on a deathbed. I mean, even I heard Nordstrom isn't doing as great as they you know they they want to do. But um, I, I just feel like I feel like it, it's it's crazy where I see J Crew filing for bankruptcy. Yeah, I never thought I'd see the day, for sure. But I I don't know what uh I I don't know what else they would do. Like they yeah they they kind of rely on like one of the big things that J Crew does is the tailoring in store, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like they kind of rely on that to kind of bring in customers because what's the difference between like I could go online and get something on J Crew, but there's like a million other stores with very similar price points. Mm-hmm. There's even uh, that uh, Indochino where you can just send in your measurements and they'll tailor make you a suit. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. So it's like yeah, there's a lot of competition, and I think that maybe moving a lot of these stores from the retail space, like the brick and mortar space, into the online uh space will actually cause a lot more smaller brands to thrive Mm -hmm. like i think like a lot of these bigger brands will start falling apart and then you'll see more unique brands kind of coming coming to a head you know i don't know i'm talking shit (laughs) no i I get it um yeah it's like i said i mean a lot of a lot of stores that well here's another thing i will say a lot of stores that did not have a online presence obviously suffered mm-hmm. uh and they're gonna suffer because i feel like uh do you i mean do you guys i mean we, we all purchase online do you feel would you rather just online shop now as opposed to actually physically going into a store um even pre-covid i i like like mr porte you know like just looking at stuff like that online or even Essence or even Union LA, just, I, I like the experience of looking at a well-curated section, you know, yeah. online. Mm-hmm. Like, um, sometimes I didn't even want to go to the store because of the intimidation from sales associates and the pressure of having, like, when you walk in, it's like, buy this. Like, do you need this? Like, what are you looking for? Can I help you, you know? Yeah. And that part of the experience, you're always going to get and uh-huh. it's just not something I, I always like. Sometimes you just don't want to be bothered and you just want to look. Uh-huh. And I think that's why a lot of people online shop in general. They yeah. don't feel bothered. They don't feel pressure to get anything. And when they see something they like and then they see the price point, they're like, oh, okay, it's easier. You don't have to deal with anybody. And mm-hmm. now a lot of people are offering free shipping and free shipping returns. So it's like, do I have to go to the store? I can literally try it on. If I don't like it, I'm sending it back. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's true. Like the only thing you have to exchange for that is patience. You just like the, the shipping time. That's it. But mm-hmm. most of these places are now offering what two day shipping for $5. Uh-huh. So it's, it's just an afterthought. Like when you get a package in front of your crib, let's say you come home from work or like, you know, you're not really doing anything. I, I personally think that's why a lot of these stores are losing the online shopping. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally agree. Uh, I feel like, you know, sometimes and a lot of times, especially, uh, and I'll say this, being a young black man, uh, I've gone into stores. And like you said, you have this experience with these sales reps that like, you know, whether you feel like they're, they don't think you're going to buy anything, they're kind of being, you know, kind of rude, whatever the situation, uh, you know, I, I remember we've seen stores, Barney's, we saw where, you know, a lot of kids were being profiled. So yeah, so sometimes it's like, fuck it, I'll just, like you said, I'll, I'll purchase online. And then, and then, like you said, try it on. If I don't like it, all right. And like exactly. I said, the, the patience part is the main thing. If you can wait for, you know, 14 days sometimes for them to get, get your stuff and then give you your credit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's the, you know, what's exactly what's the, what's stopping you really? Yeah. The, yeah. Exactly. The only thing well, uh, you mentioned this before the podcast started shoddy, the, the thing with the um, boutique stores is that the only positive is like when you go to these like big boutique stores is that they actually see you there and you kind of build a relationship with them. Mm-hmm. That's the only, that's the only thing. And that's, that's only like a very select few, like Dior would be one of those few ones where you'd want to have like that kind of working relationship with them. But like for the most part, J crew is not going to be dropping any fucking heat anytime soon, yeah. you know? So for the, like, what's the point of going, uh, there when you can just go online for everything exactly 
Yeah. It's also like a lot of these stores too, in my experience, like I don't feel welcome walking into like Louis or Gucci or Burberry. Like the way they look at me, it just makes me feel crazy. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm not dressed the part, yeah. Like if, if I'm not dressed the way they, they want me to be, like like if I'm just walking in with sweats, you know? Yeah. It's like that like, damn Selena movie. Like they'll mm -hmm. ignore you. Yeah. And, and like some of them too, like stores like Toto Kayo and like some of these boutiques too, you can even point the finger at them. Like some of their sales associates are super fashion snobs. Mm -hmm. Like they don't even want to talk to you about like, let's say you want an entry level Margella shoe. Let's say, let's say you want to get your first pair of Margella trainers. They don't even want to look your way because they're like, oh, this, he doesn't know anything about the brand. Yeah, he man. just wants to just get that because he's seen it on a wrap. Like, so what? You should yeah. cater to everybody that, because there's more money in your pocket. But some of these people are so rude because you don't possess the same knowledge as them. Yeah. And that's why it's like, well, that's why I go online. So nobody bothers me. Well, we've, we've seen that and we've talked about that with, with stores, something like Supreme. I mean, you can go in there and just feel totally like, you know, ignored and, and they're not even selling anything high end. They're selling things that obviously are, are wanted more. But, um, you know, I think that's the problem with a lot of uh, retail stores. I think either A, like you said, the, the, the associate is giving you a vibe that makes you feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. or... Or, you know, you have someone following you around or like you said, like you just like there's there's so many different things that that turns people off to retail to going in physical stores. But people still do it because it's like like you said, it's the whole the experience. It's the going into the fitting room, trying some shit on, um, you yeah. know, finding something physical in a sales rack. You know, it's like a lot of people still. I don't think it's ever going to go away, but I think, you know, now with COVID and, and just in general, I think the way sales or stores physically handle things are going to be completely different. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I saw APC, what they're doing currently right now to kind of combat the COVID stuff because they need to make sales, obviously. Uh, they are doing like a scheduling thing where you schedule like a meeting with a, with like a, a rep like a, and they kind of walk you through the entire store and you tell them like you give them like an email of like exactly what you're looking for and then they try to upsell you some other shit but like even with that shit you're like why do that when you can go online their website mm -hmm. is very clean i don't like shopping in the stores exactly you see, like that's a lot of extra work for mm -hmm. one. i feel the pressure of of having like like one yeah you know this guy has to make commission yeah or mm -hmm. a sale you know he has to have numbers so you already going in there you have this bias like oh shit like yeah if i don't buy something then i'm an asshole like, i feel I, like you know. that's obviously more so for their current customers you know yeah. like the people who are going there every day like Char charlie from down the block who yeah. comes in and buys a new pair of jeans every two months or something mm -hmm. yeah like that's for that guy to go see his favorite sales rep like that's it that's mm -hmm. what that's for yeah, no, nah, for sure. And and that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, so like and then you not only when you when you have a sales rep, I feel like sometimes you end up buying bullshit that you like just because like <laughs> yeah. you, you want to keep that relationship. Yeah. You buy so, shit you didn't even mean to buy. There mm -hmm. you go. So sometimes it could be like, you know, like say for example, I, I had a hookup at Nordstrom, but you know, at the same time it's like, you know, now you feel pressure to purchase other shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's like it's uh that that's also another thing with with having that experience that sales rep and you know personal sales rep so mm -hmm. um we have uh tomorrow uh nike is uh releasing the uh the tie-dye uh women's air jordan ones yes yes it is mm -hmm. uh, uh do we have anything to say about these um i'm not a fan i feel like I'm not a fan because Nike has been dropping so many colors of the Jordan one. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they're abusing it at this point. Well, that's, I think that's their response to the easy, right? Like the, like easy was the one that like kind of was like, all right, everybody can get a pair of Yeezys. At this point, Jordans are Jordan ones are pretty much not, not exactly on the same level, but, Close enough where you could definitely get a pair of uh, of Jordan ones 
for under three hundred dollars. Where five years ago, I don't think that was true. You know, but I also think they're like bastardizing the model. Like, I also agree with that. That's also fair. Yeah, like at least with Easy. I guess this is a really hype beast comment, but at least with easy, there's some level of exclusivity to it, you know, like at least with easy, you know, there's like, it comes with the connotation of like, this is a Kanye West sneaker, you know, that's true. Like, like, like with Jordan ones, it's like, okay, this is a Jordan one with another random color they're putting on. It. Right. So you, like you're saying like, it's, it'd be different if it was like Tinker working on every single pair of Air right. Jordan ones, you know? Like, you know? Like, like there's something special behind it. But at this point it's like, well, what else can we do? do with the Air Jordan one? Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. Uh, you know what I'm going to say? And I'm going to say this. It's, uh, y- yes, for, I mean, we're talking now at this point, what, almost eight years, seven, eight years of, of Jordan ones kind of being back at the main, at, at the forefront. I think, you know, obviously started with like the band ones being in the outlets and then people going crazy for those. And, and then we got to, you know, 2013 with, Royals and breads and black toes. Um, granted, that was a, that was a great year. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I still think 2016, uh, 2016, 2017 was just as good. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, I mean, they've had you know, obviously they've had their you know they they've had the years with the OGs where, <laughs> but um, I, I I'm gonna say this and I know this is gonna sound yes, it I do feel as if you know Jordan ones. Um, they they definitely are are, are is, is a cash grab, but it's their money maker. And when I say yeah, money maker, it it definitely you can put out any Jordan one, and for the most part, it will sell Sad. out right easily. Like it's one of the most it's one of the most easy sneakers to wear and style uh, and style. Um, it, it also it probably the, the greatest maybe top you know out of the top five Jordans you could probably put like Chicago's and, and black and reds you know in that in those top five of all time yep. and I think the model and the model is you know it, it, you can dress it up you can dress it down every uh from Lowe's you know some of the biggest uh collaborations have been a Jordan one whether it's Fragment, Off-White, Union, Travis Scott like they have you know like yeah those, they have the numbers behind them for sure so when I see like a like a, a tie dye, um, or you know even whatever rookie of the year, you know all like yeah I'm I'm the type of person I want to wear the Chicago's I want to wear the, the Royals but dude there's people who are just like fuck yeah. it if it's if it's a Jordan one I'll 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 buy it right mm-hmm. I feel that there's a certain dedication to that model that I I've seen it mm-hmm. I've seen it for sure too. We're starting to see it with dunks too now. Yes, oh. that's very true. I think uh, not even just the SBs, but the yeah, the just the dunk model itself. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, well, the shop last week was it the Virg- the Virginias, right? Was yeah, it- the ch- yeah the champion one. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah, Virginia, Syracuse, yeah. And then St. John's this week. St. John's Saint- this week, yes. Yes, I like yeah. the St. John's a lot. Those are the ones, man. St. John's are, yes, they're on the same level as the Kentuckys and the Syracuse, you know? Mm -hmm. Very nice Um, shoe. Well, I'll I'll just say this. Um, Yeah, we're we're starting to see where dunks are bastardized. Like, they're just fucking every every week. Everyone's getting a collab. CDG, fucking Mm -hmm. uh, Cactus Plant. Everyone is getting some type because that is the hot shoe. It's just like the Jordan 1 when everyone was going mm-hmm. crazy and it was like you said it was you couldn't get a jordan one for less than you know four or five hundred dollars you know and yeah and now that's what we're seeing with these dunks where i mean you telling me if if the fucking syracuse and kentucky's came out five years ago you could have probably you could have got them in stores they would have been sitting on shelves probably yeah it's true so but now here we are here we are in advanced sneaker culture mm-hmm. you know uh what else did you see the lawrence i sent you the picture of the hotline bling mock-up of the air force ones yes i did yeah i saw the hotline but yeah did you did you what did you think of those because i hated them i don't I, like them but I, uh, you know what the hot so the these the what do you call it the air force mm, ones these guys are definitely gonna throw up yeah 
So Sneaker Freaker Magazine did a mock-up for, because uh, I think there's word that they're going to do a uh, another Drake shoe and it's going to be an Air Force One. And they're saying, oh, we should do like an Air, like a Hotline Bling one. And they decided to make it look like, fuck, I don't know, man. They used like the puffer jacket, but yeah. it's just the execution is terrible. I really hope all of these are fake and nothing close to what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. The, I think these are going to be fake. I, I do like the OVO tag on the side of the swoosh. As I far as even, like, I, I don't even like that. You don't even like that. I feel like, you know what they should do if they're, they're going to make it OVO? Mm-hmm. They should put an owl on the insole. Yeah. Have a lasered owl on, on the left side. Yeah. And then the swoosh, like it would be like an icy sole. Yeah. And the swoosh would be the same kind of like blue as the or the color of the box that he dances in. Oh, like, that's like not you, bad. You, you know, like uh, it's not it's not the jewel. Oh, the Taiwan Air Forces. You guys remember those? Yeah. So like that kind of style swoosh. If, if it, like I feel like the simpler the better for me, because the last. Well, the the most the latest Air Force one I fell in love with was the Rucker Park one, but the one before that was the Scars Pizza one, and they're so simple, but they're so fire. Mm-hmm. These are the Taiwan's. Yep, like something just like that. Yes. And oh the, yeah, yeah, I could see that. And, and then the swoosh would be blue. The sole is just like that, and then they would just put the owl on the corner. That's it. Yeah, I I think with the Air Force one, you're kind of allowed to be a little bit more simplistic. Yeah. And kind of get away with it. I really hope they don't overdo it if, mm-hmm. you know, they're going for something like that. Mm-hmm. But it's all hearsay. Um, the I said that Nike does not like Drake very much. And everybody in the Discord was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Which is true. Like, they're, they're probably correct. Like, Nike yeah. very much loves uh, Drake, but he just hasn't had, like, a huge hit as far as sneakers go. Well, um, insider info, I can tell you because – of people that know I have friends mm-hmm. that know people in Drake's camp. They said because of Travis Scott, they had to push all the Drake releases because you know the whole push a T thing. Mm-hmm. So he dropped the Addy Don collection after mm-hmm. that. And then he said he wanted to do shit with Nike. I think anything as far as Drake's clothing line with Nike is gonna be pushed to 2021, like like fall of 2021, because mm-hmm. they still want to give Travis more releases. So that's mm-hmm. what's gonna happen. But they're just gonna tease everything. Because up until now, they've been, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Up until now, they've been just putting Nike swooshes on like Uniqlo tees. Oh, shit. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff is just like they found an embroiderer and like they're like, it's like the prototypes are like just on regular shit tees that they're like, Nike, what do you think about this? Mm. And they'll approve it for later. So like if you've seen Drake in a photo of, he's wearing a black shirt. Oh, I think it was in the... In the video, no guidance with the blue Nike swoosh. It's just here. That was a Uniqlo tee. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Interesting. And like, they're just pushing that shit for later. But which that's is, the, that's the idea. Oh, which no, is no, very ahead. which is very interesting to me, man. Because I mean, in terms of Drake, to me, Drake is, you know, one of the a global icon in terms of rap. But like you said, all of his. His uh, collaborations with Jordan and Nike have been not underwhelming, but they haven't, you know, carried the same weight. Like, like he's had, like, you know, his, the... The OVO 10s are, like, the biggest project as far as hype goes, I think. And the 8s. The 8s are fire. And the white 12s. I, I my favorite are the white 12s. I was going to say, I think the 12s were were uh were pretty big. The, which one came first? The 10s came first. The 10s I were... I believe the 10s were first. I think 10s, it was 10, 12, 8, I think. Yes, ten, twelve, eight, I believe as well. Yeah. Um, I just feel like, I, and I remember that the the the, the uh, black tens came out uh, All Star Weekend, twenty sixteen. Yeah, and um, I just feel like you know it, it hasn't had the same hype. Like when you look at obviously Travis joints, like you know whether it was the SBs or the ones, even the Air Force ones, everything has kind of you know had this. Like it's like shot up in terms of you know popularity in terms of resale, but the Drake stuff has been very stagnant. Yeah, and I don't know if it's the fact that they've given them bad models or just there's no true innovation behind the shoe. But if you can, you can't compare really a Jordan Ten to a Jordan One. Nah, true. 
Yeah. Also, I, I, I think this is general consensus. People look at Travis Scott, they're like, he's a stylish guy. We can look at a Travis Scott outfit and someone's going to be like, I want to replicate whatever he just wore, right? Mm-hmm. People are going to look at Drake and be like, I love his music. Not really the kind of guy I go to for style. Uh-huh. Right. The Scorpion tour, he had all custom, like, um, bulletproof vests. And I thought some of them he looked really stupid in. Uh-huh. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, some people won't agree. Everyone has their opinion. But I just feel like, his style, he's stuck between trying to figure out if he's a Tom Ford turtleneck wearing guy or if he wants to be a road man from London. Like he doesn't, uh-huh. he personally doesn't know. And I think even his stylist, Melanie Sanchez, is trying to figure out where she can place him as well, you know? Because uh-huh. like style is, right? You know, we all wear different clothes for per occasion, right? Yeah. Like some days you'll wear a button up, some days you'll wear a t-shirt, but then you kind of have your closet tailored to what your idea of you is. I personally feel like Drake is all over the place. Um, Some days he wants to wear OVO, some days he wants to wear a million dollar outfit, but it doesn't really make sense as far as him. You know what I'm saying? Uh I feel like, I feel like everyone just tries too many looks. It's very obvious. Like he's somebody else is dressing him. Yeah, like, like most of the time. Just like, hey, I think you should wear this. And he's like, okay, I will. Like, like the Life is Good video. Right? Yeah, like the Life yeah. is Good video. And then like in Tusi Slide, yeah, you have a Leaks and you, you have a Nike Balaclava and a archive Raph Simmons jacket now. Like now you're into this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it's like, like that's the new flavor of like, the month. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like, it's like where, where are you? You know, where, 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 where's your level? And I think that's just the thing that that's why and it there's like a correlation between and like his collaborations people aren't going like wow like the, look he, they they had a murakami ovo collab it didn't really flip because people aren't like wow ovo is like something i gotta be in mm-hmm. yeah you know and i totally agree i look at even when you look at like travis like his tour merch like you look at you go like people wear travis cact you know the cactus shit like a lot you know and uh yeah and i really don't feel like you said i really don't see that with drake and i think that also reflects in like like i said the the um the the way his collaborations were were perceived i think it's it's just not there yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) actually they're not I mean, it's interesting. Like I said, Trav's getting all of the the mod, the hot, the hot at the time are just hot models. I mean, you know, a Jordan one collab. I mean, that's fucking huge. And I mean, you know, what he did was, you know, I enjoyed the the sneaker. I enjoyed the lows, the highs. But even giving him a a dunk, a SB at the height of you know, this this new generation of you know the SB, new generation yeah. of hype for SBs. It's uh, it's very telling in terms of how Nike views. Travis Scott in terms of what he gets, you yeah. know, for because yeah, they know he's gonna automatically like his, like his stamp is gonna sell out as far as style. I mm-hmm. think the thirty three was the big tell for the for Nike because like the, the four the the thirty threes that Travis Scott made, uh, mm-hmm. he made Air Jordan thirty threes and oh, Air they, Jordan 33s. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. look like and when he put out the fours, it was like mm-hmm. okay, those saw that sold out, but they're fours and they mm-hmm. look good. Let's see if we'll say we can sell these 33s to people. And then a bunch of people actually bought them and they were like, holy shit, this man could sell anything. Well, look at the 270s. You, yeah. you put certain models around, like, you know, and, and like I said, you look at guys, Kendrick Lamar got a basic, like a Cortez, basically, you mm-hmm. know, and yeah. Drake is getting, you know, 12s and 10s, but they're, they're giving Travis Scott, and, I, and I've always said, I said, he is. And I've said this plenty of times. I said he's this generation's Kanye in terms of what he wears yep. and what he the influence he has on this generation. Yep. On the Absolutely. kids. Yes. Yep. It's, I mean, it's huge. He was the first person we saw in the Dior's. Oh yeah, that's right. That's Actually, right. yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. They they see the him. He, they they see to him with the Dior's when they wanted to fucking put hype on uh, spirit ons, they put the Stussy joints. He was in, the, they photoed him in those, you know, he put that on his Instagram, brought hype to the tan pair. Like he's able to, mm-hmm. to, to gain, to, to uh, like at least, you know, make shit relevant. And I, I give him that. Yeah. That's a hundred percent. I agree. Anything that Travis Scott is seen in, mm-hmm. even if they don't know the brand, people will find out. 
Yep. Uh-huh. Pe- people want to know, you know, and I think that's what's so crazy about like his influence. And I feel like, I feel like he capitalizes on it, but he's not as vocal about it as Kanye. That's, that's the difference. Absolutely. Well, I also feel like Kanye was a better dresser, even though yes. Kanye took some of his stuff from, you know, Japan and he took, you know, different, you know, he took a little bit from here, a little bit from there, but he's a better, he's more obviously way much better put together. But for this era, what Travis has like accomplished, I, I will give him, you know, he's, but he's, Travis is pretty, for the most part, basic. It's cargoes some dunks you know yep. some some crazy jeans you know vintage vintage tea yeah 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 so whereas kanye was able to i mean there was a lot of things that whether it was you know a polo or louis vuitton or like you know just a white g-shot like there was a lot of different things that kanye and, and that's what's so fire about kanye and that's what's so fire about every year he's been through it because like we were just talking about drake right Mm-hmm. Drake has so many different silhouettes, but they it doesn't really seem like him. Kanye has gone through so many different cycles. Louis Vuitton Don, fucking CDG. Pink he was, polo. He was the, the pink polo when he first came in. But, and the, even the Rosewood movement, the, the 808 to Heartbreak wearing mm-hmm. the gray suit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can identify him by each time. Even, the, even graduation, Aqua 8s. I remember when he was wearing the Aqua 8s, I was like, yo, I got to be like this man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But there wasn't a point where I was like, mm, doesn't really suit him. He experimented. He went through everything, on, even if, I don't know if he had a stylist. He probably did. But he went through everything, and you were like, it's organic. He fucked mm-hmm. with it. He genuinely yeah. fucked with what he's wearing. That's why it's like the whole Drake thing, I think, coming back full circle to it. It's like, I guess that's why people weren't fucking with, aren't fucking with what, you know, Drake does as far as clothing. What Just was your favorite? it doesn't seem organic. What was your favorite era of Kanye as far as like aesthetically? Personally, I, I think um, I would, I want to say because it's close to like w- how I am now and how I feel like is my permanent style. The Yeezus era where he was yeah. wearing Rick Owens and Visvim and you know how I love Visvim. Like, yes. I've been wearing it for years and I think that's something I've never removed from my closet. And the mask, bro? Like the, the mask, mask era, yeah. like it was just it, it was and like crazy. And like thinking about how the reception of Yeezus, how different it was. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. I loved how he was dressing. He was wearing double RL, Henley's, um, Saint Laurent jeans. I also loved like flying it trainer, like Nike mm-hmm. um Yeezy right before he went into that. Fear of God fucking Yeezy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like like right after Watch the Throne, like right after that. He cleaned it up a little bit, but it was still that like kind of distressed style. Like, I kind of want to wear whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. Like my tops are clean, my pants are dirty, and my like shoes the the Otis video. Like, uh-huh. Yeah. Like, like I I love that era. I think I think that era is something you can still replicate now and not look too crazy in. You know what I'm saying? Like even sure. graduation era was fire. Like he had in, in the homecoming video. I don't know what, what brand vest that is, but I always wanted to buy a vest like that. Mm-hmm. And I always wanted to have a scarf like he had. And I, I wanted that exact fit. Gotcha. So like, you could always look back at certain fits that he's worn and you're just like, wow, like I want to bring I, this back. I, yeah. I, I remember, I mean, I think my favorite is the, uh, the Watch the Throne era, you know, with the Easy Twos. The, 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 oh the, yeah. You know, he was, he was also doing, you know, a lot of Jordan Ones. This is like 2011, you know, I remember I, he was photoed in like bread ones, uh, denim, you know, button, denim button up shirts. I, I will always say one of the most iconic things about Kanye was, I remember when he dropped all of the lights <sighs> video in 2010 and he was on the top of the cop car and he was mm-hmm. wearing a pair of Jordan threes. Yep. Like, I remember that. Minutes. Yeah. Fire. And I and I just remember everyone was like, "Yo, I fucking need another." Almost as, like you said, like with the Aqua Eights, everyone was just like, "I need those black and cement threes. And this is to 2010, so we didn't see, uh, we saw a retro black cement uh, the year after. But I mean, he like that he made. I mean, obviously that's an iconic sneaker already. But I just will always remember him being on that cop car in those sneakers, and it's that just was like. A- that's crazy. I remember that too. Yeah, man. He's uh I will always give him like he is 
the fashion in terms of what he's done in terms of being a rapper and making it cool to kind of you know tighten up a little bit on your clothes and like he's gone through like you said he's experimented with so many different looks Mm -hmm. so uh i think we've uh i think we've covered everything that we want to cover today pretty much right yeah this is great i think this is a lot of fun uh Shadi, you want to tell us about your song? I know you have like a new single that just came out. That's why I wanted to come, have you come on here and talk about it. Third string. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's last really- um last Friday I dropped this song. It's on all platforms. It's called Chop a Singer. You could just look me up, Shadi up next. S H O T T Y U P N E X T Shadi up next. Uh, I'm sure you could look me up. The song's called Chop a Singer. It's just about um it was I, I wrote it a few days actually after Kobe passed. And it, like when I heard the song, I was like, yo, I kind of wanted to just be like something that's like smooth. Um, just like just a way for me to kill off insecurities and just uh, keep Kobe alive in my head. Because I have a line in there. I think it was like um, some some Kobe forever. I'm balling. I, I, I can't think of top by it. But mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to solidify like it, at that point in time, I remember where I was. I remember what happened. And I didn't want it. You did to, this podcast. Yeah. You did this I, podcast. And then I we went and got wings. <laughs> exactly. I remember. Yeah. Because we were all very sad. That's so what happened. Sad. I remember that too. Oh, yeah, I did do the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, he did the podcast. Because I, I remember I performed for the Asian Comedy Festival. Because you don't forget the day that Kobe dies and you have to go up to a bunch of Asians and be like, everything's fine, guys. You know? Yeah, I definitely. I, I remember. I didn't do the episode. I don't. You I, didn't. I, you I, had. You stayed home. I was. I yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I did the Asia takeovers. I was fucking. It was an Asia takeover because it was like everybody last minute was like, "Yo, we are too sad to do this." And I had my shit. I had the shit. So I was like, Bro, "Fuck I, it." I was in Long Island. I remember hearing the news. I was like, "Nah, somebody made this up." Yeah, we all thought I was it. Crying was in my car. Up. I was like, "Nah." Man, yeah, man. Two days after, got in the studio with my producers, and I was like, "Yo." I was just, I want to write this in. Fuck it. Let's do it. Yeah. That it's a great song. song. I hope everybody gives it a listen. It's It, it really we'll, has potential to blow the fuck up. We'll put it in the Discord so everyone can take a listen. Uh, yeah. So, and, and where can they find you on uh, social media? Uh, my Instagram, Shadi Pacavelli. Uh, Shadi again, and then Pacavelli, P A C A V E L I. Twitter is Shadi up next. Awesome. I don't think I have anything else. Pretty sure that's all I have. All right, we'll put that in the we'll put that in the link uh, um, in the bio for the episode as well. All right, awesome. y'all. Shadi, thanks for coming on. Lawrence, Thanks. another good one. Another have, great one. Another great one. Any last thoughts? Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can follow me at Trevisus. Follow Lawrence at LZD three two five on all platforms. Uh, follow the podcast at Sub Podcast NYC. Uh, you can Chris. send us an email, subpodcast NYC Gmail. No, we're not doing Chris. No. All right, cool. Fuck it. No Chris. No, 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 no plug. No. <laughs> you can follow Chris at not that Cheney. Tell him, uh, I don't let those white women go that are yeah. stuck in his basement. Correct. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, thanks for listening, guys. Have a good night. Have a good day. Whatever you're listening to this. Uh, peace. Peace. Peace, y'all.